it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts, independent stamping up demonstrator based in the UK. Thank you very much for joining me again today for another of my Father's Day week projects. We are on the penultimate day. So we've got simple stamping Saturday tomorrow and then that's it. Um, I'm hoping that this has given you some inspiration. Father's Day is on the 17th of June. So there is time to order things and for them to arrive. So fingers crossed. Um, right, so this is using the Animal Outing stamp set. This does come with dies, which I have in here, but we're not using the dies today. I love this set. It is gorgeous. So this is a fairly simple looking card. I've just used the um, rhinos rhinos rhinoceros. Yes, rhinoceros. I was going to say rhinosaurus, rhinoceros um, and the bird stamp. Um, but it doesn't really look like anything terribly much until you pull and then you've got the giraffe at the top and together we make a great pair. So I thought that was quite fun for Father's Day. So let's get started, except I've just realised I've forgotten to do something, which is fine. I will do it as we go along. Um, I had very carefully cut all my cardstock, but I haven't cut all my cardstock. But it's fine, we can do it together. So, let's start by dealing with the mint macaron, and then I will come back and tell you what I've forgotten to cut. So, this is a half sheet of mint macaron. All I've done is cut it in half at the ten and a half mark but we do need it to be slightly shorter. So I'm going to trim it down to 11 inches. Do not worry about any of the dimensions because they will be over on my blog, which is linked below. Now, from here on in, bearing in mind I've said cut it in half at 10 and a, quarter, uh, 10 and a half centimeters, it's a half sheet. Uh, but from here on in, um, I'm going to work in inches. Now, if you're an eight and a half by 11, Easy, just do a half sheet of eight and a half by 11. Um, and it's gonna be, yeah, it'll be about the same. It'll be slightly fatter. But at that point, you've got an 11 inch. That's what you need. So I'm gonna get rid of my blade um, and I'm going to score at three and a half inches. Seven and one sixteenth. Now a sixteenth is, let me bring this up. So if you look at these, you've got, if we go from the eight, you've got eight, then you've got a little blip, a bigger blip, a little bit, a blip, bigger blip, a little, a bigger, a little, a big, etc. So a sixteenth is one of those little, one of those gaps. So that's a sixteenth, an eighth, a quarter, a half. So seven and one sixteenths is find the seven and go one mark over and that is seven and one sixteenth and then we're going ten and five eighths. So five eighths is half an inch plus two blips. So it's part way between half and three quarters and that is your five eighths. Okay but as I say don't worry it will be on my website. So that is the basic card base. But we also need, I don't know why I put my trimmer away, we also need some cards to go inside. So I need my cutting blade back. We need two pieces and we need those to be cut at three and a quarter. So that's there. So three and a quarter by 10 and a half centimetres, which I know I'm flipping into halves. It's uh, about four and an eighth. So, but if I go 10 and a half, it's, it's basically half the width, except I've cut it in the wrong direction. My piece of, I thought my piece of card was um, the width, but it's not, it was a length. So that's fine. So. Basically, you want it four and an eighth by three and a quarter. So those are the pieces for the inside. And they will go 
there. So they're slightly narrower than your card and that's because when you pop the thing together you don't want them rubbing against the edge. So we're also going to need a scrap of Cormy Clover which again I had out and it has disappeared. So we'll find a scrap of Cormy Clover. I have all my scraps here. That is probably going to be big enough um, while I've got it out. It's just to do the tab at the top, so yay! And that's that lovely circle tab punch, which has carried over. Loving things that carry over. So that's all we need the Call Me Clover for. If you don't want to do Call Me Clover, then you know you can use, this is crushed curry. You could use crushed curry or mint macaron or just whisper white, whatever you want. So I'm going to start with the stamping and then we'll come back to constructing this, but I wanted to get everything cut ready to go um, and I'm going to open everything up so that I can see what's going on and then we'll go into the whole construction piece. So with basic grey I need to grab my d-block and my stamp for my rhinoceros. And these are clear mount, they're now available in cling mount, although I say they're now available, I think they're on their way. Um, we apparently managed to lose a container in the shipment. Um, it's been found and it's heading to the warehouse now, so any day now we should have these in, in cling mount. And just stamp this, get your card straight on the grid paper, you'll and just stamp. Okay, so one rhinoceros. I'm just going to clean that off with my cut in half chamois. My filthy, I need to wash it, cut in half chamois. But I love my chamois because it gets things clean so quickly. So that's that. Pop that away. And while I am Actually, while I do that now, no, I will come back and do the other bits. So, um, you'd think I had a brain, really, wouldn't you? Uh, blender pen. First thing to do is, on a scrap, just make sure your blender pen is clean. And all I'm going to do is do some basic colouring onto my rhinoceros. Now, do be careful. I've said this before. I will say it again. If you use a blender pen or anything other than alcohol markers, and I specifically didn't want to use blends all the time because not everybody has them, um, and I have done a blends project this week, but if you're using either your Stampin' Write markers or a blender pen, if you go too heavy uh, and go over the surface too many times, you will pill the surface so let me show you what I mean so and I do tend to do this every time but can you see the little fluffy bit that's just coming off the paper and I can rub it and it come even more comes off so do not go over your your stamps image too many times let it dry if you need to add more color let it dry and then go back but don't go don't work on a wet area and I tend to, to get shading, add colour and then start where I want the shading and then move across. So I want shading here and move across and it gets lighter as you move across because you're running out of ink, simply. So really easy. It's a great way if you don't have blends, although I would highly encourage you to get blends because they're gorgeous. Uh, but a blender pen is a good alternative as um, a sh to do shading. Um, and all I've done is squeeze ink into the lid of my ink pad to provide me with a, a little pool. You can pop um, a block onto your ink pad and pick the colour up from that. You can use your stamp and write markers if you've got them, colour on a block and pick the ink up from there. But however you do it, it's a great way of adding colour. So that's using the basic grey. 
Now I want some Sahara sand for shading. And by which I mean he's got to be standing on something. So he's standing on Sahara sand. And his horn is going to be Sahara sand. Okay, and again, clean your blender pen off before you move on to the next colour, which is uh, mint macaron. You could use Call Me Clover for this. It's just the bird. So either the mint macaron or the Call Me Clover. We won't be using mint macaron for anything else. So this is kind of a, you know, bonus colour if you like. And then, so Call Me Clover would be fine. And then some crushed curry for his beak. There we go. And I have to say, I didn't actually do crushed curry for his beak before. Don't know why, but there we go. Right, so that's him done. So let's move on to the other people that we need to stamp. So the first thing will be the giraffe. And I'm going to stamp him in, where are we time-wise? 11 and a half minutes. Okay, so going to do the giraffe towards the top of one of your cards and that is needs to be kind of straight on your card so horizontal on your card or thereabouts then again with your blender pen this time we're going to go in quickly and just oop, move the color around from the stamped image so his spots are we're just using the ink from the stamped image and the shading we can do from the stamped image and then with what's left on our blender pen which there will be a little bit we can do his horns I think is the wrong word but horns then clean off your pen I could use my grid paper for that but it's almost pristine so I don't want to Right, pop some ink into the lid. No, or not. This is quite a stiff pad, this one. That's better. So pick that up and again, we can add some shading. So starting at a darker area and then just come across to add some colour. I love doing this. It's such a great way of adding colour without blends. Um, but as I say, blends would be perfect. Okay, so that's our giraffe. We need to bring in some leaves, for which I need a piece of scrap paper. That will do. It's been used, but it's scrap, so of course it's been used. Call me Clover and, oops, ooh, let's get early espresso all over my fingers. That's a good idea. It's called not bothering to clean the stamp before taking it off the ink pad. Um, before taking it off the block, I mean. So I don't want the frog on any of this. I'm not going to ink up the frog, but I do want leaves coming in kind of from the top in both directions. There we go and I've managed to avoid the frog. Now while I've got that let me do the other piece which we want to do towards the bottom and for that I need my sentiment which is together we make a great pair, which I thought for Father's Day was quite a fun sentiment. I need to re-ink my crushed curry, I think. But we'll do, it'll do. I say that goes towards the bottom. Oh, that's all right. And then 
we come back in with the Call Me Clover, which is why I wanted to do this kind of at the same time, and add some more leaves at the bottom. And then, I may or may not need that, again with our blender pen, which has still got yellow on it, uh, we're going to just move the ink around. Yeah, there's enough on there. I don't want it to be a solid image, this is just background really. So I want it to be coloured, but I don't want it to be too coloured, coloured. That really didn't make sense, did it? I will show you what I mean. I will, I will. So if I get my scrap and the leaves and I stamp on there, what I do not want is that. I don't want them obvious, that's not well coloured. I just want it as a hint of something because that's important and that's important. That is just to fill a space. So that's why I've done that. Okay. All the stamping done. Good. Right. Let's move filthy stamps out of the way to clean later and pop everything together because this is where it gets a little more exciting. You need a piece of polythene. It's a scrap, it needs to be about mm, 11 or 12 inches long, that sort of thing, and about an inch wide. So what we are going to do is we're going to fold our card base. So as ever, you're going to fold and crease, fold and crease, and fold and crease, and you fold towards the mountain that you've made which I know is slightly counterintuitive, but that's what we need to do. And then this is where the mechanism is going to be. So grab your piece of polythene, making sure it is reasonably straight. You're effectively just going to wrap it around your card base. You do not want it too, too tight. You want it tight, but not too tight, because if it's tight, too tight, it won't move. Now, what I tend to do is work from the middle, so we will be trimming a bit off, but you need some tear and tape. Because what we're going to do is, um, when it all attaches, this is going to roll round. So if we work towards the middle slash bottom, we should be okay. So I do tend to use a reasonable amount of tear and tape for this. So one piece. Do not do what I've just done and have it coming over the edge. Um, so we'll be tuck tucking that in, but press down because you want it to be well and truly stuck. And another piece, which will not be quite as long. And pop that down as well. So make sure you've got a good amount of tear and tape because if they come apart, you're kind of stuck. Then peel. Today's supposed to be a nice sunny day and it's, oops, I'm peeling the whole thing off. Um, today's supposed to be a nice sunny day and we've already had rain. Now we seem to have a hooligan blowing up, as in, you know, high wind. Tomorrow, as I'm filming this, uh, this is probably so today for you, um, is supposed to be a horrible day, but not today today. Not my today. My today is supposed to be a reasonably nice day. Right, so we want this in the middle. I'm doing it by eye. We want this in the middle. Not too tight. Like that. And then that's going to roll up. So we'll roll it back down because we want it there. And then I'm going to put more. Um, actually, do I need more tape? No, I think that's probably going to be enough. That will do. That will do. So grab a pair of scissors and chop that off because we don't need that other piece. So we want one piece going up 
and one piece going down. So we want this one going up and this one going down. So I actually want them. It doesn't actually matter which way they are. Um, so I don't know why I'm fiddling. So I'm going to have this one going up and this one going down. So this I'm going to stick to the bottom of my piece of polythene. I think I'll do that way and then again press it down. Let's try getting it off with a sharp point. That's better. And then a smaller piece across the middle just so there's something square on. Let's rub that down. And, oops, pull it up. Yeah, Mum. Up you come. I know you want to. There we go. And then pop your card square in the middle of that. And then when we pull this up, it will still be attached, which is what we want. Then the other piece is going the other way, so we want that attached at the top and we want it upside down as we're attaching it. So again, a piece of tear and tape. I'll have that going that way. And another piece going across. Where are we on time? 21 minutes. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. This was never going to be a short video. And as you know, I do it as real, so you get all the chatter and, you know, if I go wrong, you see me go wrong, which is kind of scary. Uh, so this we want kind of, in fact, actually, let's pull that up slightly. So this we want square. to our card and lined up. Hurrah! It worked! Okay, so this goes on to our giraffe, but we can add that in a moment. So we need a piece of tear and tape down here. And again, burnish it down, gives a much better seal. that. Now this is where it's slightly tricky because you want it to go underneath your giraffe onto the piece behind it. So I'm going to put my giraffe into, can you see there? I'll pop that in, fold this over the top and then pop that down. Okay and then you can grab your giraffe and check that it's all working, which it is. Burnish well. Then grab some liquid adhesive. And pop that in the middle-ish. Bye eye. Bye eye. Turn it over. Blue. Spread it out well because you don't want it oozing out. Glue. Down. Just missed my giraffe. I should have put my giraffe slightly further down. Then we need to add a little bit of the Call Me Clover. What do we call this? Reef, leaf ribbon. Snips. Let's go there and there. So just some small pieces and these we're going to adhere to the back of our crushed curry piece and we want it there and the opposite corner. Make sure you get a reasonable amount of adhesive and then just add um, actually if I do it that 
that way up, then the leaf will tuck out. And then again, one, two, and then the whole piece. You could do this with dimensionals if you want, but for speed, as we are at, oh, good grief, 25 minutes, I'm going to put some Tombow in the middle. Now this I'm going to be putting at a, in inverted commas, jaunty angle. So there we are at a jaunty angle. And then my rhinosaurus can go. And this is going straight. So it's jaunty angle on the crushed curry, but straight in relation to the mint macaron. You don't have to, just how I like it. And then just for a finish, I'm going to add a faceted gem to the Call Me Clover. And this is one of the clear faceted gems. Remember, if you order Daisy Lane from me during, well, any time between now and the 22nd of July, you will get some gold faceted gems from me as a little gift. But there we go. Pull that. And if I hold it underneath, you pull it up. And there is your lovely slider card. Isn't that just cute? So there we go. Another Father's Day project. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, either below, or you can contact me via my website, which is also linked below. There will be a list of the products I've used below and over on my website, some close-up photos, dimensions, all that good stuff on my website. If you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's down in the bottom right hand corner. Do not worry, you will not get inundated with emails if you just subscribe. You only get email notification if you click the notification bell as well, which you have to do on my channel page. But if you just click the subscription but the subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner, you only subscribe, so it's all good stuff. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks a lot.